At the outset, I'd like to thank AIS and Professor Keithi Singh for giving me this opportunity, and I also sincerely extend my gratitude to Dr. Monica Gandhi, on whose behalf I'll be presenting. I'll be talking about the rational use of new anti-glaucoma medicines with eye on conjunctival health. We all know that the mainstay of treatment for glaucoma has always, always been medical. For almost 70 to 80 years, there was only one anti-glaucoma medication that we majorly had, that was bilocarpine. And then many, many years later, in 95, 96, we started having alpha agonist beta blockers, prostaglandin analogs, and uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. And almost 21 years later, in 2017, we found the rho kinase inhibitors and the latinoprostine bunod. Managing glaucoma in elderly patients poses challenges as they are prone to dry eye already, which is further worsened more by anti-glaucoma medications. Long-term use of these medications is necessary due to the chronic nature of glaucoma. This is a patient whom I asked to show how he puts his drops. You can see the nozzle is not even reaching the eye, and the drop is almost entirely spilled over the lids. I'd be daring to show a few terrifying pictures of the side effects and more pictures than text because I believe that pictures speak louder than words. The lengthening of flashes, typical of the prostaglandin analogs. This patient developed drug-induced psychotropic conjunctivitis. You can see the severe periorbital dermatitis, eversion of the lower lids, and severe congestion of the palpebral conjunctiva, and this eversion here as well. This is another patient with very severe allergic dermatitis um, after the use of anti-glaucoma medications. This was a patient on <coughs> rho kinase inhibitors for more than a year. You can see the abnormally dilated vessels. There's a lot of conjunctival hyperemia that happens with almost all anti-glaucoma medications, but the one with rho kinase inhibitors is different, and these look like a few very dilated vessels. Another side effect with um, rho kinase inhibitors is the reticular corneal edema. However, this one is reversible. Also, some spontaneous small subconjunctival hemorrhages, which are mostly petechial after the use of rokinase inhibitors. If you notice, this is the long list of only the ocular side effects with uh, rokinase inhibitors reported in the ROCKET2 trial. Majorly, conjunctival hyperemia, conjunctival hemorrhage, lacrimation increased, conjunctival edema, allergic conjunctivitis, and drug-induced psychotricial conjunctivitis. This is the pooled analysis of the Apollo and Luna trial. Even in this, uh, with latinoprostine bunod, the most common side effect was conjunctival hyperemia. If you look at this patient, the eye which does not have AGM and the eye which is on AGMs, you can notice the increased congestion so much in the eye on AGMs. Another patient with such severe uh, allergic dermatitis and also uh, this severe congestion of the lids. This particular patient has been one-eyed and has been on anti-glaucoma medications for more than two decades, and I've never seen a case as severe as this far in my short span of career. Such severe allergic dermatitis and very, very severe, conjuncti uh, severe conjunctival congestion and hyperemia. <coughs> Another patient of drug-induced psychiatric conjunctivitis, eversion of the lids, and uh, the sharpened lid margins have started to round in and uh, very severe congestion of the palpable conjunctiva and allergic dermatitis. So this picture typically describes this eye which has undergone TRAB and is not on AGMs. You can see the conjunctiva looks so much better than this eye which is still on AGMs and there's so much of congestion and hyperemia in this eye. Another patient of drug-induced psychiatrizing conjunctivitis where this is the early formation of simbliferon and fornicyl foreshortening. Other features found in drug-induced psychiatrizing conjunctivitis would be keratin deposition at the lid margins and punctal mm -hmm. occlusion. This same patient, after receiving a tube implant, if you notice, the conjunctival, uh, conjunctival hyperemia and congestion have reduced considerably after stopping the anti-glaucoma medications. Another patient, you see this eye, only the lateral part, the lids have started to evert so much. So then we found a few patients of ocular psychotricial pemphigoid with deposited keratin over the lids, and we didn't know what AGMs to give and what to do. You can't always give oral anti-glaucoma medications, and also how long will you give it for. So these drops, they definitely, definitely affect the quality of life and also increase the prevalence of ocular surface disease. There's a study which says that for each additional eye drop preserved with benzylconium chloride that we prescribe, there's a two times increased risk in the likelihood of experiencing ocular surface disease. These are the preservatives that we commonly find in anti-glaucoma medications, benzylconium chloride, furide, sophsia, and polyquaternium. Benzylconium chloride is found in almost 70% of the anti-glaucoma medications. It's not only the most commonly used, also the most toxic. It reduces the survival of corneal, conjunctival, trabecular meshwork, ciliary epithelial cells, 
promotes ocular tissue inflammation, causing symptoms like pain, discomfort, curing, as well as signs including increased ocular surface straining, worsened tumor test scores, decreased tear film breakup time, high prevalence of punctate keratitis, overall worsening of ocular surface disease index scores. These adverse effects are, of course, dose-dependent, worsening with increasing exposure to benzylconium fluoride via multiple medications and multiple drops per day, and also the long duration of therapy. Also, the long-term use of BAK-preserved medications reduces the success of subsequent glaucoma filtration surgery that you might be doing. Puride and Sopsia are called the vanishing preservatives. Puride is a stabilized oxychloro complex which degrades to chloride, ions, and water upon exposure to UV light. It's used in alpha gin P. Sopsia is an ionic buffered solution consisting of zinc, borate, propylene, glycol, and sorbitol the compounds that sustain main, uh, to maintain an antimicrobial environment in the container used in Travertin Z. Then to our rescue came preservative free drops and combination drops. Combination drops where you have either one, uh, either two anti-glaucoma medications in one drop and now even three with an Indian um, company. The merits of these would be that the number of drops per day would considerably decrease, obviously improving the compliance of the patient and definitely leading to a better quality of life. You're also lowering the burden of preservatives in the conjunctival cul-de-sac. So this was a patient on multiple medications, and you can see the severe allergic dermatitis and such severe congestion of the lids that he has. And after 10 days of giving him preservative-free agents and steroid um, uh, ointment for local application of the lids and copious amount of preservative-free lubricants, he improved considerably. I have no financial interest. These are the names of a few preservative-free drops available in the market. However, they also are a little expensive. They're administered in the form of single-dose units called Unims or Novelia and Aptar bottles. However, these bottles also have a few side effects of their own. It's very, very difficult to administer drops with the help of these uh, bottles because once you squeeze, either patients find it very difficult to try to um, get that one drop out or if you squeeze too much, too much of medicine flows out and again, a lot of financial burden on the patient. Yesterday in this hall itself, there was a question raised that if the preservative-free drops are causing lesser side effects, are they even as efficacious as the normal ones? So then I went back and I tried to find a few studies, um, and these three studies I found where they said that the IOP lowering effect of the preservative-free AGMs was non-inferior to the preserved AGM, indicating that benzylcholine chloride is not required for the adequate drug penetration in line with other studies demonstrating equivalent efficacy between benzylcholine preserved and preservative-free glaucoma medications. So I had really wanted to include a video of the correct technique of putting preservative-free agents. I think all of us have to have to take out the time in our busy clinics to try to teach the patient how to put this agent.